Noah Gregson and Ty Gibbs are two of the top prospects in NASCAR today, but they're also two of the most polarizing drivers. And this past Saturday at Road America, they both made headlines for very different reasons. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope you all had a fantastic and safe 4th of July. I'm still wearing the red, white, and blue for just another day. You know, it never goes out of style. When we look at the true contenders this year in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, you know, there are some veterans like AJ Allmendinger, Justin Allgaier, maybe throw a Josh Berry in there. But a couple of the favorites are also a couple of the youngest drivers in the series. I'm talking Ty Gibbs and Noah Gregson today. While they're simultaneously two of the most talented young drivers in the series, they're also probably the two biggest hotheads NASCAR has to offer today. Both drivers have gotten into literal fist fights in the past year or two. Both drivers have angered their competitors on more than one occasion on track. They're outspoken, they're both confident, maybe borderline cocky at times, and they're both extraordinarily polarizing, as, as most drivers who are labeled hotheads tend to be. Both drivers will be full-time in the Cup Series one day, if you ask me. Noah Gregson, he's publicly lobbied for a Cup Series ride this season. And Ty Gibbs, if it's not next year, it'll be the year after. So what I'm saying is these two drivers have very similar reputations. I think fans often look at both these drivers kind of the same way. A lot of similarities between Noah Gregson and Ty Gibbs. But this past Saturday at Road America, the two could not have driven more differently. I want to highlight a couple key moments from that race and talk about the reactions to both of them. Let's begin with Noah Gregson, who certainly had the, the greatest highlight or, or low light of the afternoon, probably of the whole weekend. Just after a restart, battling for, I don't know, 10th, 11th, 12th place, Noah Gregson was going back and forth with Sage Karam driving the Alpha Prime Chevrolet. The two traded paint a couple of times, and then Karam did run a little wide and got Gregson slightly off into the dirt, and going down the next straightaway, Gregson retaliated. Clearly hanging a sharp right, trying to hook Karam, ends up bouncing off him. They both go wrecking and wiping out. And behind them, nearly a dozen cars piled in. Drivers were injured. Brandon Brown had the wind knocked out of him, was in pain getting out of his car. Bunch of cars retired from the race. A bunch of drivers were sent to the infield care center, but not Noah Gregson. No, he was able to continue that race just with a few scuffs on his nine car. Tommy Joe Martins, the owner of Sage Karam's 45 car, was not happy at all, telling Dustin Albino in an interview, I'd be embarrassed to be associated with that, talking about Noah Gregson. He's done this how many times? How many times is he going to publicly apologize? Now he's trying to act like he's a bad dude, like a tough guy. Are you kidding me? That's the softest thing I've ever seen. Tommy Joe Martins also tweeted something similar and actually tagged Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kelly Earnhardt, the owners of Noah Gregson's JRM car, saying, absolutely on purpose, at Kelly Earnhardt, at Dale Jr., I'm sure you're embarrassed to even be associated with that. Hard racing and bumping a guy back, I get, but that kind of stuff can hurt someone. It's too much. Now, for what it's worth, Kelly Earnhardt actually chimed in and sort of defended Noah Gregson to an extent, saying, I'm not embarrassed. I understand you are upset, rightfully so. Our team will sort out what we need to with Noah and move on. The highs and lows are all part of what we do. Gosh, yeah, anytime you got the owners going back and forth on Twitter, you know something big happened on track. It wasn't just the owners chiming in. Reporters like Jeff Gluck, writer for The Athletic, made, I think, an interesting point. Here's what he tweeted. That's the kind of driving that should be officiated instead of doing the self-policing thing. Gregson was obviously frustrated about the contact, but he took out Karam and then triggered a massive wreck that destroyed cars and nearly injured another driver. Just can't have that. Now, for what it's worth, NASCAR did not issue any sort of penalty to Noah Gregson during or after the race, at least as of today. It's Tuesday morning. But they did talk to Gregson after the race in the NASCAR Xfinity Series hauler. Don't know what was said, but I'm sure it was along the lines of... Don't do that again. But I want to touch on a couple of things here. I want to touch on the officiating aspect first, and then I want to talk about Gregson and his you know, potential Cup Series future. On the officiating angle, I'm going to do something that's not allowed on the internet. I'm going to change my mind. A few weeks ago, Haley Deegan supported NASCAR officials doing more officiating. Like when a driver is deemed to have caused a wreck, they get sent to the tail end of the line, that kind of thing. That's what she was supporting, lobbying for, and I, I disagreed for the most part. I said, no, I don't want to see NASCAR trying to officiate individual incidents like that. It would be too much. It would be too difficult. I'm fine with letting the drivers police themselves as long as NASCAR gives them a leash to do that. Well, now I'm going to change my mind at least a little bit. I still don't think NASCAR should police 
least you know moves like what Logano did to William Byron at Darlington, even though I thought that was a little excessive, or what Chastain did at the end of the Coda race, knocking Almendinger and Bowman out of the way. You know, maybe a little excessive. I don't want to see NASCAR stepping in and trying to police those incidents. But there is a line, and I do think Noah Gregson crossed that line Saturday. That should have been a tail end of the longest line penalty at the very least. He intentionally wrecked a driver in front of the field just after a restart when everyone's wadded up and close together. Going over a slight hill, making visibility even more difficult, it was a reckless and careless decision. I'm fine if Gregson wanted to, you know, run Sage Karam off the track, maybe in a slow corner somewhere, the way Larson kind of bumped Chastain off track on Sunday, or how Bubba Wallace kind of intimidated Logano off track on Sunday. To me, that would be fair game, more an eye for an eye. You rub me a little bit too much while we're racing, maybe force me slightly off track, I'm going to force you off track. That's fair game. But right after a restart, tons of cars all around you, all behind you, you can't just blatantly door slam into someone in front of all that traffic. That's when people do get hurt. And we saw Brandon Brown didn't look seriously injured, but he was shaken up as a result of this major incident. When NASCAR lets that go and just kind of shrugs it off, it makes the sport look unserious especially when compared to other major motorsports. Like NASCAR is not your local demolition derby. Races like Knoxville last year, you know, they can be enjoyed in the moment, but they should not be praised. They should not be the goal. Some sort of line needs to be clearly established. And to me, what Gregson did on Saturday should have crossed that line and warranted you know, some sort of maybe small penalty. Something to let all the drivers in the garage know that, hey, you can't just blatantly door slam someone, try to right hook someone in front of traffic after restart. Like that should be obvious and Gregson should have faced some sort of repercussions, but he didn't, at least not from NASCAR, at least not in any notable way. Now where Gregson may face some repercussions is when it comes to trying to land a future Cup Series ride. He already pissed off one team owner, Tommy Joe Martins. He's not a Cup Series team owner, but still, I think a lot of team owners kind of think alike. Gregson has made it clear this year he's auditioning for a Cup Series ride. He would like to be full-time in Cup next season, I believe. This weekend was not a very good audition, unfortunately. Look, I like Noah Gregson a lot. He's the kind of character that we need in the sport. I love his flair. I love his interactions with fans, his engagement. But on the track, he still makes some immature decisions. And team owners will look at that. It'd be a little different if Gregson had five wins this year, but he's got two. He's one of the championship favorites, but I wouldn't say he's the championship favorite. His numbers, his results throughout his truck and Xfinity Series careers are good. They're decent, but they're not overwhelming. Incidents like the one this Saturday are going to hurt his appeal. They're going to affect his draft stock somewhat, if you will. Unlike Ty Gibbs, who we'll talk about in a second, you know, he doesn't have a sure cup ride waiting for him one day. He does have to maintain sponsorship connections. He does have to maintain, you know, some level of goodwill with team owners and with the sport. It's just something to watch out for as we go forward with the rest of this year's silly season and next year's silly season. I want Noah Gregson to succeed. Like I said, I cannot iterate that enough. He is the kind of personality we need some of in this sport. But on the track, you can't make those careless and reckless decisions, at least not as consistently as Gregson has you know, throughout his career. Anyway, let's get back to Ty Gibbs. You know, I began this whole thing by saying Gibbs and Gregson in many ways are very similar. This weekend, though, they were very different. Well, Gregson you know, fell into the old trap of overreacting and making a bad decision. Ty Gibbs ran, I think, his most impressive Xfinity race to date. I'm not going to pretend that he's completely redeemed himself or anything, but this was a great step in the right direction. And he said after the race, after he won the race, I need to earn respect back. Saturday was a great step in that direction. Late in the race, it came down to Ty Gibbs in the 54 and Kyle Larson driving a Hendrick Motorsports back number 17. Ty Gibbs went one-on-one -on -one against the defending NASCAR Cup Series champion and beat him cleanly straight up. Great move right here. He kind of shows high and is able to nail the apex to come out right behind Larson's bumper. And he even kind of withstood a, a little aggressive block here by Larson. Larson almost shut the door and ran him into the grass. Gibbs backed out of it smartly and pressured Larson into making a mistake in the very next corner, which Gibbs was able to take advantage of and get the lead and drive off and win the race. Gibbs has a reputation of being one of the most impatient drivers in the Xfinity series, especially considering the equipment he's in. He's in a great, great car. He doesn't need to drive through guys on lap one. Yet he's done that this year, and he's demonstrated at times a complete lack of self-awareness. This weekend was very, very promising. I know that 54 is a great, great car, and I know that 17 team was kind of new this year. This is their first, technically their first race of the season. But anytime you beat Kyle Larson in a top-level ride, you deserve to be praised. And especially when you do it straight 
straight up without any contact. Look, when Larson kind of almost ran Gibbs off into the grass, Gibbs could have sent it on him, knocked him off into the grass, and it might have been a little over the top, but at least you would have understood the frustration. He didn't do that. Gibbs raced him cleanly and he beat him cleanly. So while on one hand we saw Noah Gregson kind of do the things Noah Gregson's known for doing and that sometimes makes us cringe, Ty Gibbs bucked all of our expectations and did the opposite of Ty Gibbs. I didn't think he was going to race Larson as cleanly as he did. He just raced a really solid uh, final couple of laps there and beat him straight up. I was extremely impressed. Look, it's tough to beat the fact that he won his first Xfinity Series start. But considering the caliber of the field this weekend, he had a bunch of cup drivers like Tyler Reddick, Cole Custer, obviously Larson. Considering the quality of competition at Road America this past weekend, I'd argue this was his most impressive Xfinity win to date. Again, this doesn't make me forget about the shenanigans he caused at Martinsville a couple months ago, but it's a step in the right direction. And like he said, it's, it's a step towards earning some of that respect back. So I do want to give Ty Gibbs a, a small round of applause for his performance on Saturday. And Noah Gregson, as much as I love him, as much as this sport desperately needs a guy like him to succeed, can't be that careless on track. And I hope NASCAR establishes maybe a line at some point. Try to make it as clear cut and black and white as possible. Do the best you can do. I know that's uh, black and white's not always NASCAR's strong suit. Anyway, share your thoughts down in the comment section below. What'd you make of the Noah Gregson incident? What'd you make of Ty Gibbs racing Kyle Larson? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR day in, day out here on Out of the Groove. And as always, a thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this show without your incredible generosity every single month. I really and truly appreciate it. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. We've got some uh, unique videos in the works. Uh, some of them SRX related. I'll be at the race at Nashville this weekend. Excited about that. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day.